I'm very worried and I think that the number of uh, speakers who signed up for this debate shows how important and timely this topic is all around uh, Europe uh, since uh, we can find the example of hate speech in almost all our member states, unfortunately. And uh, most uh, people think that um, these are used by political parties, which we call extremist uh, populist political parties. But unfortunately, this is the case with the mainstream political parties. And somehow, uh, a lot of people think um, that uh, it is not such a big thing, you know, it's just a verbal attack, but it is the violation of human rights and uh, can make ghettos and uh, directly offend uh, different kind of people, so different minorities. We spoke about different kind of uh, phobias uh, and it is extremely dangerous because uh, people can be frightened. Uh, and there, as I said, their elementary human rights can be uh, endangered. And hate speech is, I believe, only the beginning of making someone different and pointing out at that person or those, uh, those people, that group, uh, only because they belong, they are migrants, uh, women, LGBT, or somehow a minority. Generally, I think awareness raising is the most important thing, so to figure out that it is happening and we have to deal with this. And as the title of the report say, the role and responsibilities of political politicians, political leaders especially, so we are really responsible because we are those who uh, can influence the audience. Uh, uh, Someone would say, okay, if a politician or a political leader says something, uh, that's normal. I can also repeat it. Uh, that's the reason why. So I think maybe one of the most important recommendation is exactly uh, self-regulation, code of contact. So adopting by political parties, because everything starts in political parties. Uh, they cannot use fear to motivate people. And then, of course, uh, parliament. So it can be on a regional, national level. Um, it must be sanctions somehow.